every day at your life, you know, the days that you're breathing and, you know, here <laughs> and not dead yet, but every day that you're alive, you have within you the opportunity to appreciate, to observe, to see, to participate, to be a part of this thing we call living. You can enjoy your life as it is, the way it is, or you could fight against life. You could really struggle against those things that are based upon what you can't see and can't deal with because you think you ought to do something. The reality of what Jesus brought to us was that we have a positive and a personal relationship with God. Now, we may influence that positive part by doing things that are negative. Or, if we like to put it in a better word, instead of being like power of positive thinking, you could say that we're righteous, and we shall be righteous, but there are things that influence our relationship temporarily with God that cause us to put a separation for a short period of time between God and yourself. And those things we deal with by asking forgiveness. Because our conscience can hinder us from going to God. Because, you see, God's our Father. He loves us. He knows that we're not like, hey, Mr. Hunky Dory, you know, and really operating on all 12 cylinders, or six, or four, or two. <laughs> and that we really haven't quite given our lives completely over to Him yet. But we're working on it daily. So as we do that, God inspires us to work towards a goal of being perfect, of being righteous. So as we learn to yield ourselves to God and His leading, we find it gets easier. It gets simpler. Matter of fact, it becomes so easy that it's kind of like these flowers. It just grows because <laughs> it knows what to do. You should be like that. It doesn't matter what happens in the world because we're living in the last generation. We are the last generation of mankind ruling himself. You see, real soon now, there's going to be a kind of revolution, so to speak. Or if you want to call it an evolution, well, I guess you could because we're going to suddenly morph from what we were into what we're becoming. And that's righteous. From what we were, sinners, to what we'll become, sons of God. Now, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. And I'm kind of excited about that. I kind of look at my old body, you know, kind of getting hairier. <laughs> oh, my. And growing hair everywhere that I don't want it to. <sighs> but you know, for you young people, though you may think getting older is better, sometimes getting older is kind of a hassle. So we're looking forward to the end of this age very soon now. Jesus is coming again. We shall see the tribulation period, or if we're raptured, we won't see it, but we'll be gone from it. So we'll be spared those things. Now, not everyone will be, and I don't know who will be and who won't. I know a lot of people think they will be, and some of them probably won't. So it's kind of a shocking thing for them, but it'll be kind of tough. But for those who are called to be spared of that great tribulation, then it'll be a great rejoicing you know, in heaven. But either way, whether you have to die as a martyr in the tribulation period and go through that, or whether you have to look forward to Jesus coming and you're prepared for that and you're doing everything you can to declare it, either way, you get to participate with God today to understand that you don't have to be bummed out about the end results. You're going to make it. Because God said he would take you there. God said he would hold you in the palm of his hand and nothing could take you out of it. I like that. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that really get all weirded out about this end of the world thing. There's a lot of people that get weirded out about the economy. There's people that get weirded out just about waking up. <laughs> I don't think you need to get weirded out about anything. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. 
Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Somehow I don't need to worry about you know the great next great big earthquake or a volcano. Right there it says, hey, what if you just picked up a mountain and cast it into the sea? Do I need to worry? Heck no. Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut the door about you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge, until these calamities be overpassed. Your life is hid with Jesus in God. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, when you look at Jesus, you don't look at him as like worried about the cross, terrified of it, or wanting anything but to go to it and get it over with. I kind of like that attitude. I think that's something we should be like. Let's look forward to getting out of here, getting on with it, and getting over with it. So that way we can deal with eternity. Man, if this is just like a twinkling of an eye in the sparkle of God's timing, what more can we expect to see once we get into eternity? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it, aren't you? They persecute him whom thou hast smitten. It is impossible but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. They did spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Jesus, who is he that smotes you? Likewise also the chief priests mocking him, with the scribes and the elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. Of the truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet did we esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. The life that Jesus lived, we have such a short part recorded for us. It was so intense and so meaningful that every day had a purpose and a plan. That Jesus said, I do the will of my Father who sent me. And every day that we look at his sufferings or we look at his teachings, we must recognize that that's a condensed, important part of the reality of God teaching us how to live so that we would use the time wisely, knowing that we live in the latter days. Sure, we could go out and party like the world. We could be hearty and you know get our barbecues out and just have a good old time and celebrate the fact that, hey, we're leaving it behind. Or we could invite others to rejoice in what we're looking forward to. We could participate in some ways, bringing the world into our celebration, so that they could begin to understand there's something more to what we do than just warning them about hell, but that we're celebrating an eternity to come. There's something more than what Jesus did as far as just dying on the cross, but that he rose again to live forevermore that because of his stripes, literally, we are healed, though we see those afflicted at times going through trials and tribulations that maybe they don't understand all that God is doing. I know for myself, I've been afflicted and I've been not afflicted. I've been healed and I've been not healed. I've seen the balance of both. It's kind of like, well, I didn't always know, but sometimes I did, and sometimes God took care of it. But either way, God has always brought me through the place to understand that he has a purpose. He has a design for me. Now, I don't always know what it is. Sometimes I think I 
screwed up what it was. But you know, somehow, every day, he seems to bring me to a place that I recognize because of his grace, because of his mercy, and because he knew me, he planned for my mistakes ahead of time. So I get to kind of like recognize, oh, wow, you love me anyways? All because of what Jesus did, because of what he went through. You know, I don't know about you, but man, that kind of gets you right there, doesn't it? That because of Jesus, not because of you, you get to go to heaven. Because of Jesus, not because of what you do, you get to be with the Father. Because of Jesus, we can share the good news and the gospel of something that doesn't involve us, but is all about Him. I think that's kind of, kind of humbling, you know? I think that kind of makes you recognize that, yeah, maybe we will miss out on the tribulation period, most of us, or some of us, but, uh, Maybe we ought to do something about all the rest of them that are going into the tribulation period. Because after all, we do live in the latter days. And while I don't say don't enjoy the summer or don't enjoy the spring or don't enjoy the flowers growing and the plants and grooming things, you know, just keep a light touch on everything that's happening because God may want you today to talk to someone about the way, the truth. In the life. And you know who that is. Jesus.